And in the next ayah, his father says, Ya Bunay, la taqsus ru'yaka ala ikhwatika fayakidu laka kayda. Inna shaytana lil insani aduum mubin. Now, brothers and sisters, with regards to these ayat, these two ayat, ayah number four and ayah number five, they are magnanimous, magnanimous tadabbur lessons in these. Magnanimous tadabbur lessons in these. And inshallah, we're going to go through them now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Did you fasten your seatbelts? Okay. So, let's take this ayah, or these couple of ayat, step by step. Now, just to let you know, in these couple of ayat, we're going to learn parenting. We're going to learn the importance of being a worthy child. And we're going to learn about Tawheed. Right? Now I want you to look at the ayat again. Have a look at the ayat. Right? Ayah number four. What's on ayah number four? What do you see? You see Yusuf telling his father what he saw in his dream. Right? There's nothing about, there's nothing explicit about parenting and Tawheed and being a good child. Say, what's the next ayah? Ayah number five. He, the father, said, O oh my son, relate not your vision to your brothers, lest their reigns could plot against you. Verily, shaitan is to man an open enemy. So let's take the next ayah. Barakallahu feekum. Ayah number seven. Naam. Allah says, Naam. Wa kathalika yajtabika rabbuk wa yuallimuka min ta'wil al-ahadith wa yutimmu ni'matahu alayk wa ala ali ya'qub kama atammaha ala abawayka min qabal Ibrahim wa Ishaq inna rabbaka alim al-hakim. So, ayah number four, ayah number five, ayah number six. We are going to take these lessons through a process of tadabbur. There's nothing here which says, talks about parenting, talks about explicitly, talks about tawheed, talks about being a good child. But we'll take this, inshallah, in steps and appropriately. Firstly, if we look at ayah number four, in ayah number four, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dives into the story and he grabs our attention. And he says, إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفْ When Yusuf said, so all of us are paying attention. يَا أَبَتِي He's telling his father about his dream. My dear brothers and sisters, here we see Yusuf alayhi salam addressing his father with the best of all speeches. In the Arabic language they say, that there are 10 ways to call your mother or father. The softest way is to say, Ya Abati, with a ta at the end. Ya Abati. And this was the sunnah of the children of the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. Because if we go back to the story we discussed with Ibrahim and Ismail, we see that when Ismail responded to his father, he also said, Ya Aba Tif'al. He's told his father, Aba Tif'al. The sunnah of the children of the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam was that they respected their parents greatly. Greatly. Right? This was their way. They addressed them with the softest of speech. Not like us today. Not like us today. Wal'iyadu billah. Now, how many of us have our parents alive today? Put up your hands. MashaAllah. Tayyip. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve our parents in his obedience and grant them health and protection from being dependent on anybody besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And those who've passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, grant them graves which are gardens from the gardens of Jannah. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, what is our situation with our parents today? Is it the case of the son who comes home after a long day of, at work and as soon as he gets in, his mother says, I forgot to tell you, we need a pint of milk. So he says, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. I bought you a mobile phone. I have a mobile phone. Why didn't you call me? 
and so on and so forth. And then he goes to get the pint of milk and then comes home and she says, Oh my dear son, I forgot. I need a bag of tomatoes. And then you just have this blank stare on your face. And first you said, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. So now you say, إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون. Right? Is that the case? Because that shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be the case. Our Sharia ah prides itself on this practice that we're witnessing here in this ayah. It prides itself on this instruction and on this concept of looking after our parents in very serious instruction, in very serious instructions. The Sharia ah actually prides itself on this particular matter, on this particular matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He commands us towards Tawheed and says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ He commands you to Tawheed. He says thereafter, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And be dutiful to your parents. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. He is teaching us the importance of looking after our parents by tying it and associated to the most important thing in our lives, which is Tawheed and the unity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, to make us appreciate what has been said and to further amplify our discussion, I have a video that I wanted to watch. It's one that came out, I just tweaked it and edited it for the sake of, of it being more Islamic and beneficial to a Muslim audience. My dear brothers and sisters, if a mother could write to her child in the era that you and I live in and how this process and concept of disrespecting our parents is, is a clear manifestation and it's, it's clearly witnessed. There's a clear manifestation regarding this point. And it's something which is clearly witnessed. If a mother could write to her child, what, what would she say? What would she say? She would probably say, My dear child, a long time ago, or maybe not so long ago, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me with the happiest news a human being or a mother in particular can get and that news happened the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught me that I was carrying you that I was carrying you and my dear child at this moment whilst I was extremely happy and excited I was also truly scared scared because I didn't know if my body would be worthy to your needs and your comfort. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the days to roll on. And the days became weeks, and the weeks became months, and my body undertook changes. It got to a stage where I could not even eat. If I ate, I would take it out. And this would cause me to become weak and made me prone to being sick. But through all this, I wasn't worried about myself. I was so scared that this sickness or weakness would be harmful to you. But Allah granted strength and the days rolled on and the weeks became months and I began to see physical changes to me physical changes and these changes caused me difficulty not once did I ever become angry with you not once did I ever regret carrying you I became heavy that my back would hurt me 
and heavy that I could not even sleep on my back. I could not sleep on my back. I would have to sleep on my sides. And then, with all this difficulty, came a day in which I felt a pain that I thought was the pain of death. And that was the time when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that you be born. And I went through these these pangs of delivery pain. And by Allah, every pain that came was more difficult than its previous one. But by Allah, not once did I hate you. Not once did I regret you. Even though I thought I was going to die, not once did I blame you and feel that you need to experience retribution for what I'm going through. And then the biggest of all pains happened. And I truly thought I was going to pass away. But then my eyes fell on your face. And all the anxiety of the months before disappeared. Disappeared. And then you were brought home. And... you required attention. And I was extremely tired from delivering you. But as soon as I would sleep, you would make a light sound. And that light sound would wake me up at the spur of the moment. Me being tired did not matter to me. Myself being fatigued did not matter to me. I just wanted to make sure you were comfortable. It was your comfort that mattered to me. That not once you were uncomfortable. Not once you are uncomfortable. And I would wake up and carry you and ensure that you're comfortable and ensure that you sleep well. And the months went on and you grew. And I remember when you first crawled and when you first sat and when your first tooth came out and when you first walked and you would hold my hand and walk and practice walking and we were excited for you. And yes, we were busy, but we, were, we had more time for you. You mattered more than everything else. And the days went on further. And a very difficult day came when I had to take you to school. I didn't want to leave you there because it was the first time I had to separate from you, my dear child. But a mother does what's good for her child. I couldn't be selfish. My love for you made me consider what's good for you over what's good for me. And I left you there. And you became older and educated. And another day came in your life, which put me at crossroads. And this was a day that happened after I had to deal with you becoming more independent from me. I loved you being dependent on me. But you started growing up and becoming independent. And then a day came when you were going to get married, this day. It put me at crossroads. I was happy because you were happy. But I was sad because some of the things I do for you, somebody else would do those things for you. Subhana Rabbi al And this is it. Many a times we don't understand our parents. You have to be a parent to understand the parent. Be a mother to understand the mother. Especially for the sons who are married. Yes, you must look after your wife, and yes, you must look after your mother. And understand where she's coming from. She's speaking with years of emotion. She doesn't mean to cause distress in your life. She's speaking with years of emotion. So, she tells her son in her letter that you got married, and your life evolved, and you became a father, and you had children, and you forgot about me. Allah understand. You forgot about me. And she would probably say in that letter, she would probably say, that my dear child, I'm not asking you to not spend time with your family and spend time only with me. No, I'm asking you to leave your priorities because of me. All I'm asking you, what is common sense? We follow the norms of society. 
And by Allah, society is not to blame for our retrogression. Society is not to blame for our disrespect of our parents. It's not society, it's us. Because we allowed society to affect us over the Quran and the Sunnah. We allowed society to affect us over the Quran and the Sunnah. We left the Quran and Sunnah and ran behind the norms of society. We are to blame and not society. So this is what a poor mother would probably write to her son in her old age before her death today. And my dear brothers and sisters, I ask you, what is our, what is our condition in light of this letter and in light of our mothers especially and our parents generally? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the hearts of our parents to forgive us. And by Allah they will. This is a parent. Wallahi, they will. No matter what you've done. This is the heart of a, of, of a parent, especially a mother. No matter what you've done. You ask for forgiveness, Wallahi, they will cry as if they wronged you. Subhanallah. They will tear as if they wronged you. That is the heart of a parent. Wallahi, they will let you go out in the world even though they would love you next to them because they know that is better for you. How many of us probably, we, we expats here, right? We have our parents elsewhere. But they don't put that stress upon us to come back home even though they would love us to be back home because they know the opportunity is here for you and their life is ending and your life is continuing. But is that an excuse to flout your duties? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He said, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا The height of being good. Be excellent to your parents. Be excellent to them. And don't even say to them, Uff, meaning, ah, don't even show them through your body language. May Allah protect us all, Allah. May Allah protect us all. And may Allah preserve our parents. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause them to pass away when Allah is pleased with them. And when they are pleased with us. So we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah with our parents having been pleased with us. Amin. 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 Tayyip. So this is, this is a lesson, my dear brothers and sisters, that we learn from this particular ayah. From this particular ayah. Ya abati, oh my dear father. If this was his case with his father, what was his case with his mother? The softer of the two entities. We need to be people of action and we need to make resolves. Now, in previous courses, when we've covered this part, I've asked them to do something. And I'm going to ask you to do it right now. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because theory doesn't take you to Jannah. It's practice that takes you to Jannah. Theory doesn't take you to Jannah, brothers and sisters. Allah is not going to ask you about what you knew. He's going to ask you about what you did with that which you knew. Right? So let's be people of practice. And let's take out our mobile phones right now. Take out your mobile phones, your cell phones, whatever you call it. Your smartphones. Take it out right now. And take five minutes. We're going to five minutes sitting here. Sitting here. And for those who have their parents alive, call them right now. And tell them that you love them and you apologize for any wrong that you've done to them. Whether it's your culture to do so, whether it's not your culture. I know some people say, Wallah, in our culture we don't say to our parents we love them. Do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can't do it for the sake of your culture, do it for a power or a higher authority than your culture. For the sake of Allah, maybe this phone call will be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Today you have earned Jannah for what you did. Because it only needs one act to go to Jannah. For we will enter Jannah because of Allah's mercy. Allah's mercy. And perhaps today will be the day that Allah's mercy will fall upon us. Phone your parents now and tell them you love them and you seek forgiveness. And for those whose parents have passed away, take a moment to make dua for them. Say, Ya Allah, Rabbi Rahamhuma kama Rabbayani Sagheera. Go ahead. Five minutes. Don't look to the right, don't look to the left. It's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now. Do it for his sake. Tafaddal mashkura.